is very gloomy here. This is sunrise in Canada today. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days. It has been raining its booty off here. It's unreal the amount of rain we've been getting. It's cold rain, it's ugh, mucky rain. So, thought I'd come out here. I gotta let the girls out. And they're going to be disappointed because they'll spend much of the day in the coop or out there in the rain, soaking wet, looking all pathetic. Poor guys. Gals, I should say. Hello. Good morning, everybody. I know. They are chomping at the bit to get out every morning. I could hear them making noise, gosh, an hour ago out here in the dark wanting to get out. Come on. And I'm sure it's a bummer that they've been here all day looking out the window or all, all night and um, all they see is doom and gloom out there and wet and rain and muck and gross. I, I uh, cleaned out the run a few days ago and this time <clears throat> I put down pine needles underneath and that has worked so much better than the typical bedding that I've been able to get. However, I don't have a lot. Um, there's only so much pine needles that have fallen off of my trees that I've saved. And I do notice that they particularly like the pine needles in their nesting boxes, which is kind of cool. Usually I clean out the nesting boxes and I top, top up the straw or whatever I'm putting in there that night, um, to make sure that they've got enough in there and they are, they're so messy. <laughs> Not only do they poop and you have to clean that up every day, especially near the nesting boxes, um, but, aw, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm not feeling too beautiful this morning, no makeup and hair and doom and gloom, but thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, I do. Everybody needs to hear that sometimes. Okay, so <clears throat> I noticed that they kick a lot of that bedding out. Now, last night I put just shredded paper because that's what I had on hand and it's dry and I'm cleaning out their coop today. So I didn't want to waste good bedding. We just had some shredded paper for, for the compost we, that we keep and they quite like that. And it's good to mix in and you can save some money that way as well. And it's absorbent, right? But typically if I put pine shavings in there, they're kicking it out, scratching it. Um, if I put straw in there, it's such long pieces that they start kicking it out and then the whole lot comes out and it's all on the floor in the morning. When I put the pine needles in for the first time just a few days ago, not only did it smell like Christmas in there, it was awesome, um, but I see that they've organized them into little nests like how a wild bird would, how a sparrow or a robin or something like that would make a nest. And I see that they've, they've made little nests little indentations and they've left it there. They haven't kicked it all out. So that's kind of nice. However, again, you got to clean it out <clears throat> because they poop. So you got to clean out a lot of that. I've collected some rainwater for them. I left a pot out here. I gave them some scraps, but I figured they could get some, there you go. They could get some uh, good rainwater to enjoy. And they are. <clears throat> Sometimes you can predict their behavior and sometimes they'll shock you. Still, they'll still shock me. Well, I guess there's no putting the food out today because if you put the food out, good morning. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me so early. Where are you guys? <laughs> oh, it's early here. I've been up for a few hours already in the house, but um, I never want to let them out until, until I see daybreak. All right, so I'll put their water out. That frees up some space in the coop. As you guys know, I'm in a suburban situation, so I don't have an enormous coop. They do have a beautiful big run. Belleville up at five. Yeah. Hey, Sunday morning, right? Let's make it happen. Every day seems to be the same for me. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's the weekend. Everyone's like, TGI. Yeah, it's all the same. Okay, let me hang this. So what I've got here is I hang around the top beam of the coop. That way I can keep them up off the ground and out of the poop and out of the bedding because they tend to scratch around a lot. They're so busy. And uh, so I've just hung some carabiners and I've got some good hooks, some eye hooks there and some chain that I purchased. And then I 
put it to the length of this girl, in fact, my smallest little silky, um, so that she can reach, reach the water. And then I've done the same thing with the food and the, the food holder is a little bit higher. So the chain is a little bit shorter. And then I just put carabiners at the bottom. I know people have been asking me what, what are these chain, this chain situation? Um, and then I've got another chain here, another eyelet in the kind of corner, in the corner and I hang an eye hook. Hi babies. And here's a kind of carabiner again, holding that together. <clears throat> and I tend to get big, thick, dense vegetables like cabbages or turnips or broccoli or cauliflower when they're in a nice big head. And I'll use that eye hook and I'll screw it into the core of it and hang it. And they love that. Oh my gosh, they could eat an enormous cabbage in a day. No, no problem. So easy for them. They love it. Once they figured it out, the first time I put it in, they looked at me like, um, this woman is off her rocker, but it took them about a week to finish a cabbage. Now it's a day, if you're lucky. Uh, then you can actually take the core off of that if you unscrew it gently. And I've actually had some success replanting that core to generate another plant. So, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty good deal, especially if you find a good deal on cabbages of, or if you find it on the clearance section in the produce aisle. Um, the girls don't uh, complain if it's a little... Uh, less pretty than what we would expect, right? They don't care. They're like, yeah. Um, now, <laughs> let me let me preface that. Um, <clears throat> green cabbage is great. Purple cabbage is great. All of the cabbages are great. I've used the Napa cabbage. I've used Savoy cabbage for them. But do not be alarmed when you give them purple cabbage because they will literally have psychedelic turquoise chicken poop. <laughs> and you'll be like, what did they eat? paint a crayon what did they eat in here it is literally like bright aqua color poop it's unreal <laughs> so don't be surprised and shocked you'll be googling it and you'll see that a lot of chicken owners are having the same situation so um that quickly squashed my fears of them eating something horrible it looked like i don't even know anyway um a lot of people are pulling uh, junk from their garden. I have a neighbor that is trying to do some sort of um, suburban homesteading as well in the gardening section. Not uh, They don't have chickens or anything like that, but they are trying to farm and they have raised beds and they're really trying to uh, maximize growing their own food, right? So he pulled a lot of their leftover greens and stuff so he could replant their beds for winter. And he was just going to throw that stuff and bring it to the compost um, to the dump. And I said, is that all veggie greens? He said, yeah. I said, can I give it to the girls? He said, sure. They were so happy. I, I carted over two big giant, um, recycling bins all, and they've been working on that. Um, and they literally, this was like up to my kneecaps and now they've got it pretty much picked through. So they enjoyed that a lot. There was beet greens and Swiss chard and lettuce and cabbage and kale and things like that. So they were pretty happy, but make sure that, that there's no um, nightshade stuff like tomato, eggplant, pepper leaves and things because that could be toxic to them. They don't uh, do well with that. Here, let's open up the door. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Come on. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. Do you guys have chickens? Are you thinking about getting chickens? What is it about homesteading that you guys are um, attracted to? Is it the growing of the food? Is it um, the experience of it all? What, what is it? Knowing that you're having organic food? Let me know. I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about chickens lately. <clears throat> especially when they figure out if, if they are able to have them in their vicinity or municipality. Um, you have to follow the bylaws, of course. But um, it's, to me, it's been really eye-opening. It's, it's a really great... I don't want to say a hobby because this is a lifestyle, but for some people it, it's a hobby. Some people have like two or three chickens and it's just something fun that they do with their family or their kids or whatever. But um, to be able to have a food source like that is really astounding. It's um, ensuring you have protein is crazy. And I'm not talking about eating the chickens because I'm not eating my chickens. They're my girls, they're my pets, and they are providing us with very healthy eggs every day. 
and uh, we've done pretty well. I've changed their feet up a little bit for fall to make sure that they're getting a little more winter hardy. So you want to start feeding them harder grains and things like that that take longer for them to digest. So corn, whole corn, cracked corn, uh, barley, considering chickens. Very cool. Um, they're fun. I mean, you do have to clean up poop. They do poop. But uh, all in all, they are so rewarding. They are um, rewarding in, in that you know you've got food coming. Protein is a very hard thing to acquire if you're just growing vegetables. It's, uh, it's hard to make enough protein for you to feel comfortable to feed your family and uh, be healthy. So having that um, eggs every day is awesome. We've actually done pretty well. I do try and keep track of the egg situation. Who's laying? What are they laying? What's their percentages and stuff like that. Uh, and I do I actually see an increase this month, even though I thought we'd have a decrease. Some girls have decreased, but some girls have stepped up. So they fill in the gaps, right? And I think changing the food situation and making sure they have a very um, varied diet um, has kept them very healthy and happy and laying. I tried keeping an incandescent light in the coop um, during the day over the last week and that situation didn't work because a couple of them like to roost at the top. They go in on the top rafter and someone must have knocked it. I'm out here 8,000 times a day so I do keep abreast of the situation. So now I got this little thing off Amazon and it's actually, the writing is all in Chinese but it's four buttons and I mean it's really self-explanatory. There's a power button, there's a light button and an up and down plus and minus. And what this thing does, it's, I don't have light, extra light in here, sorry guys. Um, this is just going to take the chill off in the winter, just a little bit. I don't want to spoil them because I need them to be acclimatized. And if the power does go out, I need to make sure that they haven't been spoiled because the shock to their system of having heat, per se, like say I'm in here having a heater, and then them not having heater, they could literally die because there, it would be a shock in the middle of winter. It's cold here. So this actually has a setting, it says from 28 to 35 or something like that, but it has never approached that. The coop, as you can see, is about 8 or 10 feet high. I guess 8 feet to the roost and probably 10 feet high to the top. So I do have some that sit up there. Anyway, the incandescent light didn't work. Someone must have knocked it and it kind of, you know how it breaks off from the screw in there? So I was putting that in here to try and give them a little more quote-unquote daylight to keep them happy and keep them laying a little bit longer, but that hasn't seemed to um, come to fruition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, ow, honey bunny. They demand attention, a couple of them. Boy. I'll put an LED light in there and hope that that's a little more sturdy and a little less dangerous. But at nighttime, I've been putting this on. And this is actually, I know you want to lay your egg and I'm interrupting you. I'm sorry, honey bunny. So this thing plugs in and it's a ceramic um, situation inside. It has a fan, if I can show you that. There you go. So it's a fan in there. And so when the heat that comes out from that screw, when you plug it in and you turn it on, gets blown out by a little fan. And it just uh, takes a little bit of the chill off. So I've actually been able to keep it about 15 in there. That's uh, the highest I've seen it in there, and that's just fine. I just want to take a little bit of the chill off, especially when we're going to get these really cold negative nights. I know, baby girl. I know. It's time to lay eggs. I'm sorry. Let's close the door. There you go. Good grief. <laughs> so serious. Um, that's going to take a little bit off. It did mention that you could put that in a doghouse or something like that. Well, what I will say, though is make sure you're keeping it clean. So I do see that there's a little bit of dust on there. I go up there and I take it out, wipe it off every day, make sure that it's not accumulating dust. And I think I'm going to get a backup one just in case because I don't want that thing to die and not have a backup. Um, I'm just a little, because this is my first year with chickens, so I'm a little bit nervous about winter. And I guess I shouldn't be because I know a lot of people keep chickens in just sheds and there's like holes and it's cold and they're freezing and there's no insulation. We built this coop. It's the Hilton of Coops. <laughs> I'm 
my neighbor is a builder and he helped me out a lot with this, <clears throat> um, especially with the planning of it. Um, I had the idea, but he, he made it happen. So I do have it insulated. I have foam boards all in the walls, <clears throat> which I picked up off like free cycle or Kijiji for free from somebody that took them out of a house. And I've been actually just keeping them in my attic, just stacked in my attic um, for such a project as this. So I'm glad I did that. Uh, I did have this kind of in the back of my mind for many years about building a hoop. So we've got smart board and then there's insulation in the back. I do have the light source and um, everything's pretty secure. I, I do have vents. I have a solar vent at the top. You still need the venting because again, they poop. They create a lot of ammonia um, and that they could get sick, you know keeping birds in a secluded area in a, in a tiny area, especially when they're going to be stuck in there in the winter, if they don't have proper ventilation, they will get sick and, and it'll run through your whole, your whole flock quick. Hey, stop pecking at me. Okay guys, meet Maisie. She's my house suck. Come here. Oh, she, hi, is a road bar chicken. She um, is kind of, you know, she's not the most gorgeous of the flock, but I think she is beautiful. And she has such a personality. <laughs> this one will come and peck at you and beg for attention. Hi, now you want to act like you don't want to be on film. Okay, that's okay. Say hi, Maisie. This is Maisie. She's my gal. Hi, darling. She's constantly coming for attention and getting some love. Okay, go play. <clears throat> go eat. Go do what you do. <clears throat> So yeah, that's what I've been planning and, and uh, getting together. I know I'm just talking about chickens, but today, I mean, I have some things I need to do. I've got some winter seedlings that I have started. I have some secluded areas in my private, not private, secluded and protected, not private, <laughs> protected areas in my pro on my property where I'm going to be planting some hardy winter greens um, to try and extend my growing season. I've got the greenhouse pretty packed. Let's go look at the greenhouse. The girls are out, they're eating all as well. So they'll start laying eggs right now and they lay mostly throughout the day. Let's close this door for them. I hate it when it rains because I feel like they're bored. Poor girls. Okay. Um, the greenhouse is pretty packed with tropicals. I have a couple more days. It looks like Tuesday we're going to be hitting the 30s, which sucks again. Um, not quite frost yet but I have to really giddy up and get the rest of these plants and get this stuff organized. I, I was kind of under the gun. We had a frost advisory a uh, week and a half ago and I busted out trying to get most of this stuff in. Here's the greenhouse guys. And she's pretty packed. My tropicals are in. <laughs> I don't know if you remember me doing some shows and, and showing how to plant and how to mix soil and stuff. And there was no plants in here. <laughs> Now we've got the plants in. Um, I still have to bring in some more hanging baskets. I've got everything huddled around the greenhouse, so I just need to start bringing it in and um, consolidating a bit better. Hi, baby. I've had a little bit of a sick chicken. She has been uh, quarantined in here, and that's been kind of helpful having this um, separate area, although she is taking up space that otherwise I would be using for plants. Um, here. Say hi. She's doing much better. All is well. And she's about ready to be put back with the flock. Yes. Aren't you? Good girl. So yeah, I've got my work cut out for me. Um, I did the repairs on the sides of the greenhouse where it needed to be redone. Next year we're going to be rebuilding, um, not rebuilding, but building a frame out. I know, darling. See, I'm interrupting everyone's egg laying situation. Um, we're going to be building out the one side. I got a bunch of windows and uh, that'll be nice to have an extended spot here and uh, make sure that we have a better, more secure structure. So we've got a big oak tree above. I'm going to get out of here in case we have an issue. But yeah, it'll be nice to have an extended space. Maybe I'll be able to store a little bit more of my equipment as well. It's raining. Oh, it's so cold. Anyway, we're supposed to have a nice Halloween 
this evening it shouldn't be raining and at least we can take the the baby out and walk around and see some costumes and get some candy I guess <clears throat> but in the meantime it's been a gloomy gloomy morning so share with me what you guys are up to what are your projects right now just I guess it's just fall cleanup and hunkering down I have to bring some building materials in uh, to protect them over the winter so that we're ready to do some building in the spring the one thing I would change about this coop however and I have asked my my builder to come help me again um, I thought it would be nice to have the roof open and that the girls would get more sunshine and, and it would just be a nicer situation. It's real pretty. It's the open air. It's nice, right? It has, it has the hard wire cloth. It's protected. But the situation I'm having is all of this rain. We've had so much more rain than usual. And mucking out this run has been not nice. Uh, it has been messy and disgusting and wet and heavy and it doesn't make me happy. Plus, the birds aren't able to come out here and really do anything when it rains. And if it does, I'm worried about them getting sick, just soaked out here. Um, a couple of them feel a little bit more intimidated by the other ones, and so some of them just sit outside instead of going in when it's raining, and that's not cool, so I have to wrangle them up. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. That's something that's gonna be changed, is we're gonna put, put we, we were deciding whether we should put the roof on the top, so it's going on. It's got to happen. I think that it'll help protect from the snow and the rain. Not only that, I really thought that the birds would enjoy the sun a lot more in the summer. Come to find out, all they were trying to do was find shaded areas, any kind of shaded area. Every now and again, they'd come out and lay in the sun in a weird position, like sunbathing. But I did have to put um, an umbrella out for them every day, a huge patio umbrella inside of there um, to protect them and, and make them a little happier. So they're not really into that sun like I thought they would be. Um, they just, it would just be better to put a roof on. So that's something that we're revisiting and we'll fix. And that'll be done next year. So that's cool. It'll just match the other side and it'll be nice. It looks like a, a pretty little coach house in fact. So it's, uh, it'll be a nice looking situation. And it'll be better for me and them in the long run. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a quick video. It's been a while since I talked to you again. I'm just trying to hunker down and get things done. There's so much to do. As soon as you start doing one job, you're like, oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that. And uh, you have a timeline that you're not really sure when it's going to start snowing <laughs> and icing. So you're just trying to hurry up and get things done as fast as you can because you just don't know. It could be freezing tomorrow. Anyway... That's that. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy sunrise. That's a, kind of a sad sunrise this morning, but that's okay. Thanks for joining with me. Uh, I know I've just been rambling. I could talk all day about this. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Be a champion in your house, or your kitchen, your homestead, wherever you are. And yeah, Kevin, think about chickens. They're a lot of fun. Bye, everybody. You too. Thank you.